الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين ورضي الله تعالى عن صلاتنا أبي بكر وأمر وثمان وعلي وعن الصحابة أجمعين ما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today is the 16th day, 16th of the month of Shawwal More than two weeks with the departure of the month of Ramadan. 16 days today, 1439. And it's the 30th day of the month of uh, June. 30th day, 2018. My topic is going to
Quran is wahid. Our qibla is, do we say wahid or wahida? I'm asking you. Our Allah is wahid. Our Quran is wahid. Our qibla is it wahid or wahida? Why wahida? Wahid, huh? How do you say? This is a matter of language. Do we say our qibla is wahid or wahida? Wahid. Is that correct? Wahida. Wahid. Now, beautiful. Because al qibla is feminine because of ta. So our Allah is wahid, Quran is wahid, qibla wahida, and our prophet is. Allahu Akbar. We all believe that we pray in a day how many times? Five. So that belief also is wahid. If anybody says no, I'm gonna I'm gonna pray six times a day, or he's out of the Ummah. Look at the look at the unity. How many days do we fast in the month of Ramadan in a year? Is it one month or two months? Is it one? Okay, how many days make one month? Is, is there unity there? You are saying 20 and oh, 30. Yes, now. According to Arab culture, if you have 10, by the time you reach 9, they call it 10. They call it Jabrul Kasar. If it is 28, no, it's not a month. You can see? Unity. That is why when Allah addresses the Muslim, He says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Allahu Akbar. Allah doesn't say, Ya ayyuhalladheena. No. Oyehu, singular. Ya ayyuhalladheena. Oyehu, believe. Is He talking about Arabs? Pakistanis? Caribbeans? Af no, no, no. Alladheena amanu. All of you. See the message. So he says, Wata'awanu, help one another. It's a message of unity. If you pray in your house alone in the night, what do you say? You say, Iya kana budua, Iya kana stirin, Iya kana na na. That na noon suggests plurality. If you want one, you say, Iya ka a'budu. Okay, why don't you say a'budu? Because you are one. No. You are, even though you are one, but you are living with your Muslim Ummah. In the spirit. You say, Iya kan a'budu. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Why do you say ihdina? Since na means plural. Why don't you say ihdini? Since you are the only one praying your house. You can say that. So even as alone, the spirit of teamwork is with you. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the hadith of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, in Bukhari and Muslim says, "Al-Muslim lil-Muslim kalbuniyan yashuddu ba'dhu ba'dha." The Muslim. To his Muslim brother, it's like a building. One part of it supports the other part of it. If you come, you meet a structure called building. The lower part gives support to the middle and the upper part. There is a kind of a complementing togetherness. So a Muslim brother helps his brother. That's how we are supposed to be. But the issue, are we like this today? That is why I say the ways of achieving unity. The topic is unity, a precious commodity, and the ways of achieving it. Because of time factor, I will analyze some 10 ways to achieve unity. Are we set? Are we ready? Number one. Purity of intention. Okay. If in my community we talk about unity, first, 
bear in your mind that well, oh Allah let me give my contribution because I know you want it not because of somebody to press me so you are cleaning your heart from the beginning clean your mind the other guy should clean if you have this mindset you are likely to achieve everything achievable but by the time you want to achieve okay what am I going to achieve at the end of it no don't worry about your personal interest worry about the communal interest for example Muslims in the Bronx here for example so we want to come together, Mount of Enkasa and Nasr. Let's come together and build an important dispensary or a medical center to serve the needs of the Muslim Ummah. Their women should go to be looked after during the birth. No man should look at them. You can achieve it and the government will support you. And you begin to say, well, I want to give my support. But am I going to be appointed to be the leader of the committee? Come on. Are you after your personal aggrandizement or are you after the benefit which is coming up? That is very important. What? That's the last ayah in surah number 18 al kaf so that is very important that is way number one i told you the ways of achieving it what is that eat unity first good intention if you marry your wife today it's a unity she comes from one house you from different house can you marry your daughter no so you have a unity you want to achieve something yeah you want good children there is unity of purpose eventually she's gonna help you she's gonna help you at all you want to have good kids who have the Quran memorized of good education you tell her darling please look after our kids well I am on a journey she pays the school fees she goes to the graduation in her absence because you are united but by the time you tell her, well, I want to marry you just because I want to prove to other guys that I can marry. That is the intention. You can never achieve success because of the absence of al-ikhlas. So mark this condition number one well. Unity, a precious commodity, and the ways to achieve it. That's my topic. Way number two of achieving unity is consultation at Teshawur. You consult one another. If, let me assume, in this masjid, I believe we are up to 20. I think we are more than 20 in the masjid. Are we up to 20? We are more than that. Okay, this 20 number we say, okay. We want to pay the school fees of 20 boys in Bronx. Their parents are dead. Let's do something. Now, but we, we, we are gathered to consult one another. How do we get the money? The first man should tell us the way. The second, the third. By consultation, somebody maybe has beautiful ideas you don't invite him you wouldn't come well I have not been consulted how can I go there he will even tell you I respect myself if I'm not called I don't want to impose myself on people what if I have gone and they ask me hey, get out so get somebody with bright ideas what is your view by the time you respect somebody you value his ideas, you will feel encouraged. He knows he too is a relevant person in the society. So consultation is very important in achieving something good. That is why even in your house, you should consult your wife. 
You tell her, for example, we want to go to Africa to pay visit, but I want to hear your view. You are the one to fix the date for our journey. You are respecting her. She feels so I'm very important to this man that, is, that I call my husband. That is very important. Okay? Do you know there can be some schools they fix examination after consulting some of the students. It may be difficult, but they can consult the students. Which time do you want us to fix? If 70% have a singular view, 30% should be disregarded because the majority of the say carries the vote. So consultation is another way of achieving what? Achieving achieving and i told you unity a precious commodity dash 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 and ways to achieve it the first one i talk about what purity of intention number two consultation number three resourcefulness 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 is of two kind there is what I call uh, intellectual resourcefulness and material resourcefulness. Yeah. Okay. We are gathered. You have been consulted. We have purity of intention. But we don't have bright ideas. Nobody can say something good. You only drink your tea and go. So poverty of idea is very dangerous. That is why some people, if they are gathered, if they want to discuss something important, they bring nice foods. Because if you eat well, good ideas will be coming. <laughs> Did you notice this? Yeah. Do you know Santin Hausa? <laughs> it's because the food is very nice, the food. So, I'm telling you, good eating habit help in making ability nice. Eat nice food. Maintain nice eating. Exercise your body. Sleep well. They can help in augmenting. You don't have to even take in some extra pills, some whatever. You already, you have the God-given, what you call, minerals in your body. So that is number three. I call it what? Resourcefulness. And I classified it into how many parts? Two. Intellectual resourcefulness and material. Al hafidha or awal iqdamu al maddi wal iqdamu al aqli wa tafakuri wal dhiri. It's very important. So then it's very important to select the people. I think that guy has brilliant ideas. Because we sat in a meeting, wow, the way he was talking, he has a lot of ideas. Bring him. And in doing so, forget about age. You can get a young boy who will surprise you. Believe in me. And somebody 50 year old, 40, how? Oh, is an old cargo. He can't say nothing. Somebody can bring brilliant ideas. will be surprised. Do we engage women in so do we? Why not? Give them their place. Go tell them, write your ideas. We want to have this. Do you know the first engine of train was based on idea? Do you know the first photograph was made in 1921 by William Draper out of ideas? Do you know Montaigne's, Montaigne, not Montaigne, Montaigne is out of brilliant ideas? So it's a matter of idea. All right? So that is intellectual resourcefulness. And material. Material, okay. You may have, you might have produced all the ideas, but you need money to execute your plannings. Here comes what I call what? Material resourcefulness. You need something. 
because nothing can be achieved today without money. Even this lecture, the cameras, even the way you are even taking this lecture in your phone, you must have bought your bad data. So money is something indispensable. So I call it what? Material usefulness. So this is way number what? Ma'am? Number what? I mentioned three. I'm going to mutual trust, MT. Very important. Mutual. How do you spell mutual? Who can spell it for me? M U T U. Beautiful. Mutual trust. That is a riba al mutabadal. I trust you, you trust me. If there is suspicion, mistrust, how can you have success? I don't like Forget about it. Don't mind him. So there has to be mutual trust. I trust my Imam. I trust my Mu'addin. I trust my brother coming to the masjid. If there is lack of trust, whatever you do, Satan will come and blow it into ashes. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضٍ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ The unbelievers love one another. They have trust. So this is important. If in a masjid you have collected $100,000, okay, brother Abu Bakr, Yahya, Dawood, you are the trustees. Why do you call them trust? Because we have trust in them. There is mutual. Take the money to our account. We agree with you, but everything should be recorded. We're going to call you one day to give us the account. How was the money sourced? How was it deposited? Tell us how was it spent. Do it meticulously. People should know how the money is spent, but don't be suspicious. It's very important. Tell them we have spent one dollar, X, Y, Z, X. I know no matter what you do, there are some doubting Thomases. What has been done? We have never seen it. So you are, you are, you are, you are, you are missing the first condition, al-ikhlas. Hey, but if we need ikhlas, we need accountability too. So there should be what? Mutual trust. Do you agree with me? Do you know if you lack empty with your wife, there wouldn't be peace? Even your wife, you have to cultivate the behavior of what? Empty. What is empty? Mutual trust. Okay, you are going to a journey. Say, hey, my wife, take this amount of money to buy the needs. I will come back in a month's time. You gave her $500. She spent only $300. Do you expect a balance to be returned to you? Do you expect? <laughs> you gave her $500. Spend it, I am traveling to New Jersey, to Delaware. I'm gonna come up in a month's time. But take these for the needs of the kids in the house. Now she spent only five, $300. Are you expecting that the remainder should be returned to you or not? You are divided. Yeah. You see, why I bring this, it depends on mutual trust. You can tell her, look, my darling, I am giving you this $500. Whatever that remains is yours. Oh, very beautiful. But she should not take that as a means of reducing the spending for her to have the remainder for her pocket. She should fear Allah. Instead of spending for the kids to eat well, she breaks something down. So mutual trust is very, very, very important. Now, in case you didn't tell her, I'm leaving something for you. No condition like this. You just come back. Do you still expect something to be given to you? What is expected is for her to tell you, I have spent X, Y, Z, this is the balance. 
she gives you a balance of $200. What are you supposed to do? Tell her, well, I take it. Oh, she will bow down doing sujood to Allah to thank Allah for your kindness. But if you tell her every single thing remaining, single pence or cent, bring it back. What kind of person are you, man? Don't you trust, trust her? So when next time you travel, she makes sure everything is spent. She tells you everything is spent. What will you say? So this is very thing important needed in our masajid, in your working place. If some people employ you, now some of you are workers here in different places of work. You have been telling me even some of the Jews trust Muslims more. They told me this. Now maybe the Jews feel that the Muslims maintain Abrahamic faith. You know Abrahamic faith? Al-Islam. So they view some of you more reliable than some of the kafirun. Somebody told me, Wallahi, a money will be left in my cab I drive, and I will take it down to the owner. He said, what? You bring it by? I said, yeah. Because my Iman, my religion of Islam tells me to be truthful. He says, wonderful. What kind of person are you? Are you foolish? I'm not foolish. I'm a good man. So that trust has been making some to employ Muslims than other people. Even agreeing to eat your food than the food of others. So don't allow that mutual trust to be lost on you. Bring it to the community you live. We need empty in everything we do. What is empty? Mutual trust. Way number so far. I've mentioned five. Tell me number one. Beautiful. Uh, number one, achieving it. One. Purity of number two. Now consultation. Jazakallah khair. Number three. Naam? Aha. Of how many kind? Beautiful. Material, intellectual. 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 Number four. Mutual trust. Number five. Number five. Respect. Mutual respect. Mutual trust is different from mutual respect. I respect you, respect me. That's very important. Though I trust you, but whenever you see me, you look down upon me, you say, oh, the guy is truthful. But because he wears odd clothes, I don't respect him. You can see the differences. He always rides old car. That's what I, that's what I have. Even if I am coming on the back of donkey, respect me. That's all I give me. Don't gauge me on account of what I wear. Listen to what I'm saying. That is very important. So MT and MR. MR, respect. Even your kid, respect him. Say, and daddy, it's better you sleep early to wake up early in the morning to go to the work. So, oh, that's beautiful, my son. Say, thank you. <laughs> go and sleep. But you can tell him, no, I can't sleep early. I have a lot of papers to sign. Say, okay, sir. He took his hey, shut up. Who are you to tell me? It's very bad. By the time you shut him up, you are shutting your brain up. Maybe Allah will bring good answer from his mouth, you deny yourself. Can you tell me the name of a prophet? That prophet was given a judgment. He got it wrong. His son at the age of 13 gave a better judgment. Who is that? Yes. Prophet Dawood and Jamil. Wa fi 
وكنا لحكمهم شاهدين ففهمناها سليمان وكلا اتينا حكما وعلما الله اكبر داود اند سولومون when they were given judgment concerning an issue and we were witnesses to what they gave but ففهمناها سليمان we gave Solomon the correct understanding of the judgment. Even though Solomon was the son, look at it. Prophet Suleiman. And the Solomonic hikmah. The Solomonic wisdom. Let me tell you something before I go. Go on. There were some women who went to a river bank to sweep. Two women. One of the two women had a baby. She removed the baby and put him down by the side in a clean cloth. The winds and began to sweep. The other woman had no child. She has been looking for a child with none. She came out of the river quickly and stole the baby. Still my baby. The mother came out crying. My baby said, no, it's mine. He was here. And quarreling began. They went to Prophet uh, Suleiman for a judgment. But Suleiman was not there. Only Allah knew who was truthful. Oh, Allah's prophet is my son. Says she is lying, is my son. She held it. Now, Suleiman said, Okay, the only way for me to judge, let me get a knife. Knife? Let me slaughter the babe into two parts. You take half, later, take half. The woman that stole said, yeah, that is correct, do it, it's better. The second said, no, 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 I don't want it. Give it to her, Allah knows. Now automatically, it became clear, the one that stole the babe was lying. How could you agree your son to be slaughtered? Look at the comments, look at the fiqh. We call it Solomonic Hikmah. Al-Hikmatu Sulaymaniyya. What am I saying? MR. Mutual respect. You can see somebody poor without nothing. Don't disrespect him. So all these are very important in achieving unity. So whenever you sit, let me respect your view forsake my own. If you disagree with me, don't abuse me. And I should not abuse you. I can say, well, would you respect to the view of my brother? But we are sorry, we can't take it. It's better than saying that is good for nothing view. It's condemned. How do you feel it? I know I am wrong. But why do you call it good for nothing? At least you know there is a different idea. All right? So mutual respect is important in achieving unity in each and every given community. How many ways have I given so far? Five or six? Number six. It's also important to know achieving unity is a requirement of the deed. It's a requirement. If you struggle, you try to make the Ummah united, you should know you are doing this because Allah says we should be united. That should be not at the back of, but in the front of your mind. Some are saying at the back of your mind, say no. should be at the front, at the center of your mind. Because whatever you do, and you know it's an ibadah, then you do it religiously, dutifully. You know, Allah will ask you about it. So it's very important to make sure that this is an act of ibadah. It's a requirement of ibadah. What is that? 
What is that? Tell me what have I said as factor number six. Look at it as an act of Ibadah. It's way number six. The topic is unity, a precious what? Commodity and the ways to achieve it. I mentioned up to five. Number six, I said, you look at effort of uniting the Ummah as what? As an act of Ibadah. It's very important. I don't know if it's clear to you. Number seven. I will not stay long on that. Number seven, or is it six? Number seven. Achieving unity in the Muslim Ummah, especially, also requires the Ummah to have almost everything documented. If I should ask you, when was this masjid founded? Can you tell me in which year? 19 what? 2001? You should have that one written. Because that will make you have your record not broken. Yeah. Yesterday I was giving a talk in a masjid in Philadelphia. The name of the masjid is called Masjid al Jamia. Very, very big. Very, very big by the standard of America. Somebody told me just one millionaire in Saudi Arabia got the information. His kids were schooling there. They were struggling to buy the masjid. When they got the information, he sent the money. It was bought because of his belief that that will unite the Ummah in the community and expectedly he did it for the sake of Allah. That's our own hope for him, inshallah ta'ala. And I was asking them, who can tell me when was this masjid founded? Yesterday in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania. That can only be possible if you have a document written. Everything documented. If I should ask you, since when this masjid was open, how many Juma'ah prayers have we so far said in the masjid? Do you have the record? How many people have we been able to convert or to revert to Islam? How many widows have we been able to help? These are also very important in maintaining unity. That is, you have your documents intact. At least, if we are gone back to Allah, those who take over will have the series of things. That is very good in maintaining the unit of the Ummah. Is it the time? Hmm? Okay. So it's time. We're going to stop here. It's going to be in two prayers. So far, we have how many points? Are you right? You're not right. When I ask you tomorrow, my condition for progressing until you tell me this tomorrow. Otherwise, I would leave it to go to a new topic. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم